Minor League Baseball has a deep-rooted history in American culture. Did you know that in 1949 there were over 59 leagues and 448 ball clubs? As time wore on and competing inventions to keep us occupied like television and real dolls hit the market, this number gradually dwindled down to the current total of 160 teams today. People moved on, teams left town, more focus was put on the big league level so that Mike Trout could make enough money to hire a team of midgets to carry him around on their shoulders. And some of the minor league teams that are left play in pretty horrible stadiums. Maybe they are remnants of that era long past. Either way, today we're going to look at the worst minor league ballparks in baseball. And that's coming up right after this. I have a brilliant idea. Let's put a ballpark in hot-ass Bakersfield and align it with the plate facing west so the hitter and the crowd has the sun in their eyes all damn afternoon. This independent league park has been around since the 40s and they usually have to delay the start time depending on the sunset. Most of the time it's after 8 p.m., the latest in the business. On top of its odd orientation, it looks like there is simply no seating on the visitor side, rather just a large tented area. Maybe those are the luxury boxes. I'm also assuming these sheds here are either the clubhouses or where they keep the lawn mowing equipment. Lastly, it's worth noting that it's only 352 feet to dead center in the park, the closest in all of professional baseball. I grew up just outside this stadium, and as a kid, I had no idea how awful it was until I saw how many times it was suggested as a bad stadium, and I started to look back on my experiences there. The field is unnecessarily far from the parking lot. The bleachers are about as comfortable as sitting on a hot ceramic stove, and you'll have monkey butt by the third inning. Bryce Harper refused to play here. Sounds familiar. It's pretty bad he chose to go to Hagerstown instead. In 2012, a gas leak destroyed the business offices at the park and burned their mascot, Uncle Slam's costume, putting them out of commission for the rest of the year. Almost a dumpster fire, almost. The Peanuts plan to move out by 2020, but where are you gonna build a stadium in Northern Virginia? San Jose keeps catching L's when it comes to stadiums, as this one is in the shadow of Sifku, one of the worst college football venues in all of the land. From the air, this place doesn't look so bad, but the all-concrete structure is nearly 70 years old and is aging about as gracefully as Andy Dick. Municipal shares the parking lot with a skating rink, where the Sharks practice, which might be more inviting than watching a game here. Overall, a very outdated and low-effort ballpark. This field looks like it has the potential to be great. On a man-made island near Daytona Beach, named after baseball legend Jackie Robinson began breaking baseball's racist color barrier, the site earned his moniker because in the 40s, Jacksonville and Sanford refused to allow Robinson to play in a game. Hold up, entire cities banned a baseball game because the color of a player's skin? That's pathetic. Here was the site that allowed him to first play, and the name is a fitting tribute. What's not a good tribute to Jackie is the very odd architecture, which has what looks like half-completed grandstands on the first base side and open-air seating on the third base side. I can't imagine the heat and mosquitoes this place produces during the terrible months like August. Next to the stadium is the Volusia County Courthouse, and I think the verdict is in. On one count of being a shithole, this stadium is guilty. <laughs> Deep in the mountains of Tennessee is a ballpark where they play professional baseball, but easily outclassed by most high school stadiums. It's pretty unfair to pick on this tiny town, but of all the lowest effort professional ballparks, this one gives about as much effort as Chris Christie's pants trying to hold in his gunt. The stands are tiny. I can't tell if this is a parking lot or a really nice drive through graveyard, and it looks like home run balls find this poor guy's windows often, or an unsuspecting kid riding his bike around the neighborhood.
Though I don't find this stadium to be particularly ugly, I do find it pretty freaking weird as along the first base side you have this huge overbearing press box that serves as a duplex for the adjacent football field. It makes the venue look incredibly odd and over the left field bleachers is a golf course where someone with more than warning track power could conceivably hit a golfer with a batted ball. That would be sweet, sweet irony. What would they yell? Four, bagger. As I have said before, weirdness can land you on this list. It's not always about being ugly. I actually love the architecture of this stadium. The placement next to the river, the view of the bridge, it all looks amazing. So why is this ballpark on the list? Well, first of all, it's in Camden, New Jersey, a town I would call a shithole, but that would be an insult to shitholes. Ground was broke for the park in 1999 as part of an economic revitalization project with funding in the form of loans and grants. The park opened in 2001 and was voted the ballpark of the year in 2004 by Baseball America. It had a sponsor in Campbell's Soup. They were riding high like the beginning of the VH1 biopic on Axl Rose. And from there, things got bad. Low attendance because Camden is legitimately dangerous to go in any situation, day or night, and I'm not joking about that. And low ROI on the bonds and loans that were taken out caused serious financial problems. When the Camden River Sharks decided to leave in 2015, it sealed the death warrant on this beautiful park and it sat empty since. In fact, demolition of the park began last year and guess who got to pay for it? The citizens of Camden. Ah, Jersey, keep it Jersey. This stadium is not only old and looking worse for the wear every year, but has also been the center of a nasty feud between the mayor and the residents of Richmond, Virginia. The Diamond opened in 1985 and has had its share of history. Famous Braves, including Dale Murphy and John Rocker, have played here. But as time has worn on, the 34-year-old stadium has found itself obsolete and barely serviceable for baseball. Despite the city losing its longtime AAA affiliate and lucking into a AA team, attendance figures have been strong. So why hasn't this aging ballpark been replaced? Because nobody in the entire damn city knows where to put a new field. The mayor tried to get one put downtown like in Memphis, and the residents went apeshit and moved swiftly to block the proposal. The ongoing feud has played out over the last 10 or so years with absolutely no plans for a new ballpark in place. Meanwhile, the aging structure is about as hospitable for a game as a sex dungeon is for a Christian youth meeting. Parts of the concrete are visibly rotting, the seats in the upper deck are old and uncomfortable, and the bus station across the street looks cleaner than this joint. It is, however, a fun place to watch a game. Just ask my obnoxious kids. <laughs> This stadium is another caustic tale of a minor league ballpark slowly dying and turning into a giant science experiment. Greer Stadium was opened in 1978 on the grounds of an old Civil War fort named Negley and enjoyed a long history of both AA and AAA baseball until around 2011 when it became clear that a new stadium was needed. In fact, Greer was never supposed to go past 30 years and in 2015, after four long years of painful use, it was finally closed and turned into the rotting dump you see in the background. Aesthetically, it doesn't look like a terrible park. The guitar for the scoreboard is certainly unique, if not cliche for Nashville. But as the stadium sat empty, urban explorers, graffiti artists, window breakers, weeds and brush moved in, and finally the city decided to demolish the stadium, which literally just started. Don't worry, the team moved just down the road to first Nashville Stadium, which is amazing and might make my best list. And now for the worst minor league ballpark in the US and A. Here's a stadium that's uglier than the AAF's current situation. This was the most suggested show of all the minor league ballparks. I found this review on Travel Advisor. It seemed to sum it up. All the charm of a Nevada prison. Little food because attendance is low. Terrible sight lines. Plus seats are $5 more if not bought in advance. What kind of message does that send to tourists? It's a fascist policy. Not to mention 107 degree heat. 
Most of the low end reviews were like this and to me there is just no reason to have a square stadium. It just looks odd. Plus it seems it's more fun to duck into the adjacent Las Vegas theater and to catch a show and I'm positive there are some slot machines in the lobby somewhere that also have coin operated oxygen. A lot of the reviews did say the games there were fun because it's baseball and to me baseball is always fun even if it's in a crappy ballpark. Also edibles are legal in Nevada so yeah anything is fun then. Well, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to check out Scentbird for the absolutely smartest way to buy cologne and use my code 5 points to get 30% off your first bottle. And don't forget to check out my other stadium critiques. Yep, still milking it. There will be a best version of Minor League Parks too. I'm 5 Points Vids and you made it to the end of this video.